Hey everyone, welcome back to Fisher's Shop. In an effort to reclaim some of my office desk space, I want to create this weird looking contraption. I designed it to be a clamp that can hold my headphones so that I don't have to set them on my desktop. It's going to have a wedged mortise and tenon joint at the top, three splines for reinforcement at the bottom, and I'll even be making my own star knob too. The only bit of hardware in the whole thing is going to be the one bolt, so there's no other nails or screws. The idea is that I'll clamp it on the edge of my desk and I can hang my headphones off of the protruding piece. Well, let's head to the shop and see if I can make it happen. I chose to make the whole thing out of a chunk of mahogany that I had laying around. I started by squaring off the sides over at the miter saw and then taking it over to the jointer to remove all of the saw marks and to square the edge up to the bottom. The next step was to resaw the board down to near its final thickness. With that done, I cleaned up the edges of each of the new boards on the table saw. Now, I'm measuring out and marking what the final length will be for all the pieces and then taking them back to the table saw and cutting them out. Once I have them cut lengthwise, I can ditch the crosscut sled for the rip fence, set it at 2 inches, and begin to cut out the pieces to their final widths. Now I'm laying out the lines that I'll use for the tenon. As you might be able to tell from my stellar technique, this is the first time I've done this before. I don't have a marking gauge or even a marking knife, which would have made this process much easier. Instead, I opt for the horribly inaccurate and painful way of doing it. But <laughs> I gave it a solid effort and I can't complain too much about the results. Next, I took things back over to the bandsaw and I cut out the neck and the shoulders of the tenon, making sure to stay just on the outside of the line. I really took my time here and tried to keep things as precise as I could. Now I wanted to start this project with some sharp chisels, so I made sure to run them all over the diamond stone so I had a nice clean edge to work with. Then I cleaned up the sides of the tenon that I just cut out and got them nice and smooth. With that finished, I cut the tenon piece down to its final height, cut out another piece, and then gave them both a quick sandy. These two pieces will make up the bottom section of the clamp, and they'll be reinforced with splines. So I glued them up, clamped it, and then I set them off to dry. Once it was dry, I took it over to the table saw, and then with my spline jig, I cut out the center spline first. Then by adjusting the stop block a bit, I could cut another, and then flip the piece, and then cut the last one. This left me with three spline channels that were equidistant from one another. Then I used my thin strip jig to rip down a piece of maple that was exactly 1 8 inch wide, which is my kerf width. I slid it around inside the spline channels, and then I traced out three triangles on it whenever it was snug. Then it's over to the bandsaw, where I managed to make something easy look difficult for some reason. I smothered each one in glue and slid them in place, and for the stubborn ones, I squeezed them in the vise and made sure that they were seated all the way down into the channel. Then once the splines were dry, I could trim off the excess on the bandsaw and then clean up the remainder over on the belt sander, and this left me with a real solid joint. Now it was time to make the star knob. I started by drawing a two inch circle with my magical poke and spin circle drawing tool and then I divided up the circle into eight pieces of delicious apple pie using my combination square and my trusty Detroit Lions pencil. Then with my stabby tool I marked all the intersections and then took the piece over to the drill press. Using a quarter inch Forstner bit I drilled out all the holes around the perimeter of the circle. Then it's back over to the bandsaw to cut out the knob. It doesn't matter too much how precise these cuts are because everything's going to get cleaned up over on the disander. Here we just sand down each point to make it a little more like a knob and a little less like a ninja throwing star. Although that would be pretty cool too. So in your plumbing department of your local hardware store, you can find these things called Johnny Bolts. They're typically used to secure toilets to the floor, so they come in packs of two, and they are perfect for making these knobs because of the flat, oval-shaped head. I traced out the shape, and I chiseled out the recess for the head to fit in that keeps it flush with the surface of the knob. 
Next, I draw and cut two more circles on the bandsaw. The first of them is going to be a bushing that will secure the knob onto the bolt, and the other is a shoe that fits on the end of the bolt, and that will pad the end and keep it from marking up the underside of my desk. I cleaned up all the edges over on the disc sander and then took them to the drill press. The bushing gets a hole drilled all the way through, while the shoe only gets one about a quarter inch deep. Now it's time to glue the bushing onto the knob. I should mention that the holes I'm drilling are slightly undersized so that the bolt has to cut threads into the hardwood. I thread the bushing all the way on, I spread some glue, and I fix it into place. And when it's dry, I thread on the shoe. So here's the most difficult piece of this project, chiseling out the mortise. At least it was for me. This is my first time doing anything like this. I started by gently accenting my knife marks all the way around and then slowly taking more and more material out. Once I had a pretty good taper on all the edges, I got a bit more comfortable. I transferred the mortise location onto the other side of the board and then did the same thing over there. Then with the mortise started on both sides, I could step up my game a bit. I became a little bit more aggressive in my chiseling, alternating between chopping down the walls of the mortise and then cutting on an angle to remove material. It was a time-consuming process, but at the same time, very satisfying. But it's nerve-wracking, too, knowing that one bad chisel placement and the whole thing is shot. As luck would have it, my two sides met up perfectly when I broke through. Then it was just a matter of cleaning up all the edges, making them square, and then sneaking up on the perfect fit. When I finally got it, I could trim it down to its final size on the table saw. I cut a couple wedges out of maple and I'm tracing out where I want them to go on the tenon. Over on the bandsaw, I cut out the wedge location, staying on the inside of the line, but this is where I goof up a bit. I accidentally cut past the shoulder line on both of these cuts and then I had to recut and lower the shoulder to accommodate. And now it's time to finally put these two pieces together. I glued up the sides and the shoulders of the tenon, and when it was all covered evenly, I tried to fit it into the mortise. I had to use the persuader a few times, but eventually it drops down into position and everything looked good. I smothered on a bunch of glue on the wedges and stuck them in their respective slots on the tenon, and when they were both ready, I sent them home with the hammer, making sure to hit each one evenly. Drilling in the hole for the bolt, and with everything dry, I can now use a pole saw to lop off the top of the tenon and the wedges. And then with that gone, I can hit it with the sander and get everything looking real nice. Next, I cut out the inset for the headphones on the bandsaw. Now this doesn't have to be perfect for just my set of headphones, so I actually make it a touch bigger. This way I can hang my sombrero, my fanny pack, or my headphones. I use a round file to add a curve to the edges and then I switch over to a flat file to smooth out the bottom and get rid of all the bandsaw marks. I touch all the faces I can reach on the belt sander and for those that I can't get to, I attack it by hand. Here's a slow cinematic zoom to show how intense the sanding stage is. Look at the focus, the determination, the filthy clothes. Now it's time for finish. This time I went with several coats of shellac. I loved watching the transformation this took when it got its first coat. The mahogany grain really popped and it just looks beautiful. I trimmed up a couple anti-slip cushions for the inside surfaces that will be touching the desk and this will protect it from getting scratches and it'll eliminate any sliding. Now let's put it together and see how it works. screwing it onto the desk and it fits very snugly. Works perfectly. Here's some close-ups. Did you say something? I had my headphones on. Here, let me hang them up on my brand new headphone clamp. <laughs> This was a lot of fun to make, and you know what, I think it really came out looking good, didn't it? And the best thing about it is it gave me the confidence I need to start experimenting with more advanced joinery techniques. So, that's a lot of fun. If you'd like to try making it yourself, I'll leave some two-dimensional and my SketchUp plans in the video description below. So, check them out there, and you can download them if you'd like. 
I'm really happy with all the, the desktop real estate that I've reclaimed here. So now I can put more important things up there like this. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see you next time. All right, take it easy. Oh, you idiot. You're dumb. You have to draw a two inch circle, so one inch radius. Moron! Oh, jeez, I'm still recording. Holy kropskis! What was I even recording there? Well, it's not even close to being centered. <laughs> Uh, let's try that again. And you know what? It's the, what's, what's really great about it is that it gave me the confidence to stumble and mess up my words and really say the wrong thing. Stupid idiot. Would you say something? There, I, I, I don't care if you said something. I don't care.